My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Slice and Dice. Time for another classic hard dungeon. Third turn board. Ah, hang on. No, we learned in the last episode. We look at the characters first. Lost, so we have the range, the poison, the cruelty as well. Ruffian with the big hit on that pain side. Healer with the ability to give us a lot of mana. The cultist, similar. Healer, also the ability to heal up the cultist quite effectively with heal three sides. The defender, quite basic. Uh, we're up against third turn boars. Every third turn, add a boar. That sounds like a nightmare. Stone monsters. All monsters require their final HP to be removed individually. That also sounds like a nightmare. Add snake. There's a snake in each fight. Or the top three heroes start poisoned. That hits the lost. That hits a character that I really, really cannot afford to carry poison at the moment. In fact, two characters that really can't afford to carry the poison at the moment. It's probably add Snake. Oof. Could it be Stone Monsters? Try and give myself the ability to do individual instances of damage to remove enemies at the end. It's probably the least problematic right now. Let's do it. Stone monsters. Every single monster has one final hit point that must be removed individually. Actually, it's going to be pretty bad here, isn't it? Yeah, because I'm not going to be able to cut to kill the archer on the top line anymore because the archer is in the back line. Oops. I mean, it's not like any of them were going to be ideal. Okay. Let's just generate as much mana as we can right now. Gonna burst the rat and then instantly kill it. Men sets a hero to 3 HP. I don't even know if I cut right now. Does one damage to the archer on the top line. It's honestly probably just worth it for the sake of setting up that archer to be able to die to a single cut next turn as well. Because right now it looks like I need to do one damage to this archer. I need to do... One damage and then another instance of damage to this rat. One damage and another instance of damage to this archer, which just makes it very laborious. How many hits do they think I'm going to be able to fund? Maximum number of hits. Beautiful. Uh, so two instances of damage against the rat. One instance against this archer. A single burst and then follow up with the cut. Takes it out. Gambler and Fiend. So it really shouldn't be Gambler, the Gambler having 5 damage and using that 5 damage in order to instantly nuke a target out of existence is a huge amount of the value of the Gambler. Also, worth noting, the Fiend here does have access to Burn, 1 damage to all heroes and monsters on cooldown. That's a really good way to try and remove those final points. I think I'll be taking the Fiend for that reason. Still no items? Keep on keeping on. See what this crone and this thorn are gonna do us. Uh, a cleaving attack like the ruffian is currently demonstrating the ability to use here is quite nice. Let me confirm this will kill the ruffian by the thorn. Yes, it will. Okay. Hmm. Do I still want to lock that side? Because I'm gonna have to look for a defender defending specifically the ruffian in order to push through that. This thorn is going to have to be attacked two times. That is... I cannot explain how bad that is. We will need to hit a ranged attack. Actually, if the Lost hits the ranged attack, I'm going to be very, very happy about that. Um, yeah, I'm going to have the healer take the heal because they can heal the ruffian back up as well or the fiend back up after casting particularly tough stuff. Uh, that's not what we want. Okay. So Ruffian gets that cast through. Healer heals up the Fiend. Lost dodges no incoming damage. Beautiful. Well done, buddy. The Thorn is refractive, so it's immune to spells, so it's not going to take any damage to burn in this round, even if I happen to roll it out. Yeah, I should probably just hold on to my mana. There's a world in which I tried to consider using the dodge on the lost and then burn in order to blow up the top spark from the crone. 
which would then try and target my lost with two damage, but my lost would already be dodging. But I've chosen not to do that here. The thorn with five damage on its reflection is just very tough. Um, if I heal the fiend and then have the fiend just attack it directly and then have the crone oh no I'm going to lose the lost by doing that should I just be fine with losing the lost like this hang on I have a heal to play with I have the damage from the ruffian, but the ruffian, if they use that damage, is going to die. That just happens. I can't save the lost. Well, this the lost. Wait, no, the lost is only going to take two damage to the crone, right? No, everything was already fine. I screwed up. Oh, two damage to the crone and then one damage to the burn. That kills it. Okay, hang on. No, 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 no. We do need to try and figure this out still. Uh. Hmm. Lost removes the crone and then I can just leave the thorn for the next round. Try and remove it elsewise. Or let it just run. Yeah, that's more than good enough for us. Revive potion. Replace the middle right side with a revive potion that you'll never drink. Oops, oops, oops. Still in planning to do so. Uh, and then reagents. Replace the two right sides with blank and heal one regen. Blank and heal one regen right now. I mean, it's an upgrade for the defender. Uh, is it a particularly good one? No, I think I need a big swingy effect like a revive potion to try and help me out in this world. really don't want to give it to anyone until like I don't want the healer to lose the ability to get one mana while I'm pushing her for rolls and instead offer to revive people that aren't needing to be revived in that instance so I still do want to try and hold the potion in my inventory but if I end up failing to use potions enough times I may reconsider that I may give that one a little bit of a look over again uh fiend can prevent a large amount of self damage themselves here which is nice the rat on the top line is also a pretty likely target for us to be taking out this round. Which would also prevent a lot of that incoming damage. Love to see that. Lost can prevent two incoming damage with that dodge there. Yeah, Lost has a lot of very effective effects. Specifically that one included, baby. Uh, the poison is very valuable here to us. Here's an AoE hit from the Ruffian in order to take out the rat on the top side, as well as help us work down the wolf and boar. Uh, I mean, yeah, I should probably just prioritize the boar here. Do I need to burst them this turn? No. That's not going to help me in any way. Alright, lost on the top side. If you dodge just to, you know, eliminate that enemy's effect... Or impact this turn, that would be good enough by me. But I will also take the poison. Defender has the ability to save you now, if need be. Hmm. Actually, if you defend the ruffian, the ruffian can attack the wolf. Burst, and then if I mend the ruffian and mend the lost, I can then burn in order to kill both the enemies. <laughs> I knew there was something like that in there. Uh, one mana cantrip does mean that would confer cantrip to the copycat science from the ninja here, giving us three cantrip science as well as a two damage double use. Is that good? I mean, having one mana sides and one mana cantrip sides as well as double use in particular is very effective against the idea of enemies having tough. But also, the druid is currently offering the ability to get balance, which is one damage to all enemies and heal one to all allies. Costs three, but we've seen this combination before. 
Fiend has the ability to deal one damage to everything on the field, and then the healer heals our damage and doubles down on the damage on the enemies. So for four mana, we deal two damage to all enemies uh, from a base state. As well as just manipulate our own HP, which can be important. It's another person who would have the ability to save the ruffian from their own strikes right now. I'm taking the druid. I also think the loss is like disproportionately impactful as a level one rogue, or as far as a level one rogue goes. So I kind of just want to hold on to that. Okay. Time to fight the Alpha. Yeah, just dodging that for three is worth it. A growth attack, definitely worth it in a fight like this. There's our cantrip. Yeah, so we nullify all of the incoming damage here. I could even burn in order to deal one damage to everyone on the field, but I feel like the the one damage matters more to me right now. Ooh, the alpha's gonna summon two turns in a row. That's tough stuff. Druid helping me grow my defense is nice, but is it gonna save us? Loss isn't taking any damage this round. Me being very defensive when the enemies are being very aggressive, or rather summoning and being it, it doesn't add up to a victory, I'll tell you that. Uh, okay. We now have four mana, so we do have the combo. We have the combo, we have the wombo. Um, let's go for the burn, and then the balance. And then we'll help defend the defender. I can start taking wolves off the field, but the only appropriate thing for me right now, surely, is to get some excess poison on the alpha. I mean, we haven't had to withstand the alpha's attack for the last three rounds, which is nice. Uh, three rounds? Two rounds? Two rounds. We haven't killed any of the wolves yet. Being healing by two there is actually really good. And since this is a one damage on not nothing, I probably should have locked the ruffian previously. So I'm just gonna have a play around with some stuff that we can possibly do here. Uh, the ruffian on the top. is currently dying but if I do I don't know if I want to save the ruffian in this instance and if I don't want to save them I don't need to defend them in the first instance either Five damage from that against a single target does seem the most efficient I can do here. So if we are doing it that way, what follows? A... Well, the ruffian cannot now survive a burn. So this locks me out of using burn, which then means that I am going to be using a burst. And if I am going to be using a burst without using a burn, the alpha gets to summon another character to the field. That just happens. But, while that happens, I still lose my Ruffian. So if I'm still losing my Ruffian, no matter what, let's go back to the very first step. And let them die more easily. Then, I mean, two instances of damage are being done there, so that's fine. And then I'll even save the lost. And then burn. Attack the entire enemy party. 
Alpha is ready. There go the wolves. Saves a bunch of HP. I think that went well. Yeah, I'm not really going to get the damage on board that I wanted this turn, but that's okay. Uh, we use burn, then balance. Single hit against the wolf, and we'll finish you off next round. Wait! This could have been a lot worse. One wolf down, and a titan bane boat. Oh, another potion. But it's a good one. It's a very good one specifically for bosses. Uh, There's also Garnet plus one to incoming healing or a random tier two item. Titan's Bane adds Dispel and Drink and plus one to the middle left side. So Dispel removes all traits from the target this fight. So it's not only a plus one to the middle left side, which can be really, really important. Uh, I guess the AoE cleave on the Ruffian would be a good target for it right now, but there's usually good targets for it in the upper levels. Uh, not only that, but also it dispels all traits from the target this fight, which can be boss traits. Like, for instance, Hexia. Having Titan's Bane in order, or Titan Bane rather, there's no S, uh, Titan Bane in order to help out with Hexia, prevent them from having both Mana Burn and the on-hit reflect damage. Huge! But do I really want a second potion? I'm doing it. I'm taking the second potion. Two goblins and a snake. Walk into a party. The druids? Two damage here. Do I really want that? I think I'm fine with it. Defender, defending for two is good enough for you right now, I believe. Ruffian gets absolutely nothing. That is rough. The enemy. Uh, I obviously want the snake down first. And in fact, if I burst and then burn... I can just save the Ruffian. Well, I guess if I do it that way, does that then save the Ruffian? Yeah, the Ruffian's still taking one damage from that. And then the finishing of a single goblin is almost trivial. Largely the problem that the tough is pre uh, presenting to us is it asks, no matter how many actions you wanted to take down this character in, use one more action. And usually that's, you know, one more die from one more character. But with having access to AoE through burn and through balance, we have the ability to get that very efficiently. Like, burn can be three characters attacking at the same time. It's only... And, rather, in fact, it gets to do that whether or not it sets the character to one health or if it finishes their final health. Both ways, it's saving me the extra action it otherwise wouldn't have. Okay, that's good. Druid and Lost take out a goblin, and we find a dabbler or a guardian here. Hmm. Dabbler is just solid. Dabbler is made of solid matter. The guardian's gonna have fewer targets, I think because the Fiend will only be a good target for the Guardian on turn one. Hmm. But also the Guardian is offering a lot of block. And I do need some more block right now. I've commonly found myself in a situation where the Druid isn't doing much healing because she's just got the heal to cleanse. And I've got two self-damaging characters. I'm gonna take the Guardian. Also an extra monster. We can add an ogre to this fight, which is tough, for a sapphire. Add the, uh, replace the middle left side with plus two mana. No. Not doing that. I don't think I would be able to survive it. This fight is going to have a lot of summons, and that war chief is not going to be easy to take down instantly. Okay, Ruffian. 
It's a big sword. We're not really going to be able to prevent the Slimer from doing too much here. So we know the Slimer is going to be dealing 3 damage and they're probably going to be dealing that 3 damage to the Lost. The Lost is either going to have to dodge or die this round because they can't defend the Ruffian and the Lost. That's all the block the Ruffian requires. So we can do 5 damage to the Warchief and then we just need 2 more instances of damage to take them down. We don't find them, but we do keep the Lost alive, which is good enough to me. I'm also going to take this opportunity to burn to get the Warchief one closer to death. So that I only have to spend one action, possibly even a burn on it next round. Three mana immediately gives me the ability to use balance, so I'll take that. Oh my god, the AoE strike as well? I don't think I can sponsor Ruffian to use that attack again. As much as I would like to be able to. Let us... I mean, we have multiple different sources of AoE at the moment. I want to get this target below half HP before I use that. So it's... Balance, then strike, then strike, then burn, leaving us with one slimelet that then flees. Got him. Whetstone, plus one to all basic damage sides. Uh, man, I wish I had the dabbler at that point. Abacus, shift your entire middle row across by one and get plus one to max HP. I do like the idea of getting this so I can possibly set up for a different combo in the future that utilizes a different placement for something. I mean, you know, it has the ability now to add plus one to, well, I mean, swap them around. It adds it to the pain or it adds it to the cleave to spell. You know, we can influence things like that. That's kind of cool. But we can also just currently give plus one max HP to the ruffians, so it's much easier to keep them alive. Uh, we're up against a Cyclops and Ludus. That shouldn't be too bad. I suspect. Oh, Cyclops is just instantly killing Lost. Yeah, this um, not having much uh, uh, max HP at all is tough, as it turns out. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty rough. I'm going to keep that on the Lost. Uh, so five... Yeah, I did need a little bit more damage. Glad I got it. We can do two there, and then a burn. Prevents all of the outcoming damage from the Cyclops this round, and only the Druid is taking one damage to the Ludus. Thank you, Ludus, for deciding to do no damage, and also to do it to the healthiest person on the field. Much appreciated, very helpful. So I can do two damage to the Cyclops, I can do four damage with the Lost, and then I can regenerate, use balance. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm already very comfortable this turn. Do I want to push for the ability to try and kill the Ludus? I mean, none of these really even save me or help me much at all. Cyclops is now down to just one. Let's use the balance and then engage the effect on Fiend when they had max HP after the balance in order to block them up. Armor them up for as much as we possibly can. And in fact, all of the incoming damage that was available that turn. And that's already enough to kill. I'm not going to continue rolling. Ruffian kills the Ludus. Or Pseudal, rather. Ludus is my version of it. Hmm. Trapper. 
Kill an enemy with four or less HP ranged. That is a disproportionately valuable effect right now. However, so is this with the Whirl. One damage cleave, one damage cleave, or one damage to all enemies. Three different cleaving effects on that Whirl. I'm going to go with the cleaving effects, I believe. I believe in them. And take the plus one to Fiend here. That is plus one to their HP, max HP rather. Actually, gosh, maybe I should give it to the Lost. Because if the Lost doesn't have plus one to their max HP right now, they just die to the effect of Agnes dying. Agnes having top flame deal three damage to the topmost enemy. I mean, well, rolling three damage is pretty incredible. You just take that. Guardian blocking for four is also really good. Druid two mana. I don't know if I want to settle for that this turn. Mm, druid blocking is good, though. It's better. So, let's go three damage. Oh no, wait, I can't, I can't do Agnes first. So I'm gonna go three damage. Burn. Two damage against Gith. Okay, I can't take out Githa first either, so it's gotta be McGrath. No, McGrath's also going to do three damage to the bottom most enemy, which is the Fiend. Okay, can I... Prevent better damage on better targets. Like this, making sure the Fiend stays alive. And then I can return to attempting to kill Githa first. <laughs> Leaves us one short. Guardian's almost dead. Fiend's joining them. I don't have the ability to kill a target this round. I would love to have killed Agnes and prevented the summon of a wolf. Are you kidding me? Boy. Sounds like a jam. Well can do the kill for Githa as well as pass damage on to other targets. Fiend healing up this round seems like it would be a really good idea. The druid, I, I do need to be able to unpoison the fiend as well, so the druid is going to have to take that. Yeah, two damage like that is probably the best the loss is going to be able to find right now. Alright, let's see what we can do with this. Noting that we do have a burn as well. Let's try a weird version where we burn first. So I'm going to keep the Guardian alive. So we burn first. How does that help us if it does? We can kill the wolf next by just targeting it directly the entire time, removing HP off of enemies, and then we end up with three people dying at the end of the turn up against Agnes and McGrath. That's not good. That's not what we want. So there saves the fiend. We'll have well attack through taking out Githa. I almost wonder if I should kind of treat uh, Guardian as a sacrificial here. Three damage to the bottom most enemy. Maybe not. Let's try something like attacking you twice over. 
saving the Guardian and then burning. We still lose the Guardian and the Lost in this round. Oof. Although we do minute, uh, winnow it down to just Agnes and the Wolf. Do I have to burn this round though? Because I don't have to lose the druid. No wait, hang on. Yeah, if I burn then, I don't lose the druid anyway. I just get to remove Yeah, no, 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 this is the this is the path we're going with. We've just got Agnes and the Wolf left. Agnes doing AoE, Wolf doing AoE as well. Uh, I would love to get some AoE defense. That's not defense, but it will help me take out the wolf. So, taking out the wolf is a simple matter of... Two damage to you. Two damage to you kills the lost on the top line, which we knew was going to happen. One damage AoE, and then we could try and burn the... Or rather, we could try and burst to protect ourselves. Okay, that's... That's not the version I want to go with, I think. I mean, in this version, I still lose someone. And Agnes keeps more HP. Yeah, I think I should just have the Lost Eye here. I'm basically going down this round regardless. And we keep the Fiend around, and the Wolf should be a trivial kill with these three targets. And just having a lot more actions available than them, that'll do it. Goodbye, Wolf. The wolf dead. Uh, Ritual Dagger. Replace the rightmost side with revive the t four topmost defeated allies and death or Karen's Obel. Add death wish to the two right sides. Times two to its effect if you are dying this turn. We are dying a lot of turns. Times two to the effect of Lost's Cruelty if you are dying this turn. It's kind of cool. Actually, Karen's Obel gives me the ability to... Or rather, sorry, the Abacus gives me the ability to double that Death Wish, have a cleave effect, benefit from that instead. Actually, that is probably the target who should be holding this. Godspeed, Whirl. The bones ought to not be too much of a problem with this, thankfully. There's an AoE strike for us. We take those. That's... Some mana. It's, yeah, it's kind of a low roll for the mana at the moment. I'm going to continue pushing the Fiend a little bit, especially because they do have a cantrip. Okay. I'm actually going to do balance first. And then one attack to the bones in the middle. <laughs> Reaper! Kill five monsters with a single ability. We get Demonic Deal. Uh, add pain and plus two to all sides. Love it. Spellblade versus Juggler. I mean, there's the cantrips back. Single small instances of damage is definitely Spellblade's kind of thing. Having access to poison as well. But so goes for the Juggler. The juggler having Karen's Oval and Death Wish on the Shield one in Kandra would be kind of interesting, but I don't think it would trigger much at all. I'm going to take the juggler. When better to have many small instances of damage than now? Unfortunately, we would like some large instances of damage at this point as well, considering we are against the zombies. Uh, yeah, I have literally no way to deal an instance of four damage here. So I just need to try and take targets off the field. 
Oh. Guardian, I would way prefer your area of effect here if you could. Oh, it would be absolutely magnificent. Well, I will take your three damage in a single instant, but I'm not happy about it. Oh boy. None of them down on round one, two of them poisoned for two. And then all of them are poisoning for two this round. That's not their most common side. Uh, boy. Three damage does get the zombie near to its death. Mm. Okay, I will attack that zombie because I know I'm going to be following up a balance, killing the zombie on the bottom line, helping me to defend the fiend, who does need to have access to as much HP as possible, holding on to some mana for the possibility of burn in the following round. If the druid rolls uh, heal to cleanse, I think I have to keep it. And there it is. Fiend also rolls the self-heal. That's all of our potential for mana uh, gone. Guardian's probably not capable of saving themselves. Boy, this is not where you want to be. We've kept our damage classes. We only lost our healing and ability to stay alive. <laughs> I'm going to take the AoE hit on the Whirl here, hoping it gives me the ability to remove the second zombie in effective fashion. I think I have lethal with these. There we go. Oh boy, we lived. We lived. Not well, but we did. Uh, spell clink, double all friendly shields. Or Ruby, plus two to incoming healing and to your empty max HP. I'll take that. I'm going to give it to the Fiend. When the Fiend self-heals, that's the most impactful there. Uh, illusions, Graves, Soodle. We should be fine in this fight. Thanks to the fact that we have a lot of area of effect because we've been preparing for tough. We should be pretty reasonably well prepared for this. Okay. Fiend, I'll actually have you roll the self-heal this round. Guardian gets an AoE. Wasn't expecting that from them, but very ecstatic to have it. Um. Yeah. Let's play it pretty straight there. Get rid of the illusions so I don't have to worry about any mussing up my next turns. Good mana, big AoE. Love both of those. Um, I kind of want one more mana so I can do burn and balance here. That would be really good. Uh, I'll accept this. This is fine. Oh, and another AoE hit. I was not expecting that. Okay, Fiend. Let's go for a balance. Damaging through all the enemies there. Wait, hang on. Much earlier on, that should have been deployed there. Then we'll go through the balance. Then... Yeah. Then broad AoE, then more specific AoE. 
I think there's probably a version of that where I can get them all to die that turn, but again, it doesn't matter as long as I have the ability to save myself this round and have the momentum to be able to kill them in the next round, both of which I have. Or have. Uh, Shaman versus Wizard here. I shouldn't plan around the Wizard buffing the Juggernaut, uh, the, the Juggernaut, the Juggler eternally, because that's not very realistic. However, the Shaman does have access to Ritual for 4 mana, heal to cleaz, uh, clean, sorry, cleanse and cleave. So it targets the original and it targets both sides of them. And we do need some cleansing. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's time to take the shame. The Baron has Mana Glutton and Tough. I don't know if I want to try and dispel those. I don't know if those are dispellable. Uh, I don't know if those counts as traits. But I do not want to find out. All the rest of this I'm pretty comfortable with. Let's go. Oh, wow. Instantly trying to rock the Shaman. How dare you. I, I can't kill these ghosts in a single turn because they have immunity up high and then they have toughness down low, so I can't kill them in a single shot and I can't not kill them in a single shot. Um, I mean, well, doing three damage here is quite nice. Three damage direct rather than three damage distributed. Guardian, if you shield the Fiend before they then cast the self-damage effect here, which I think I'll actually still push on, um, that's enough to settle for it. Uh, actually, that would have helped us, but now it won't help us as much. Shaman, I really want the defense from you. Didn't get it. Shield there, and then, ta-da, we got a bunch of HP, a bunch of, sorry, a bunch of mana. If I burst, I can save the Shaman from going down this turn. That's all I can really do. Hope to remove the ghosts more efficiently next turn. Hmm. Guardian can give a huge amount of defense just to the Fiend by themselves with that attack. I love to see it. Shaman with a large hit they can use here to set up the next ghost. Love to see that too. Unfortunately missing out on the heal. The well can defend themselves as well as the Guardian quite effectively right now, so they will. Hmm. We keep all of ours alive this round. Um, just gonna burst to finish off the ghost on the top line, reducing the incoming damage. I'd love to use a ritual next turn to try and save the whirl and the juggler both on the top line. Uh, we can get some extra mana also just by pushing against the Baron, and I need to remind myself of that. The world with an AoE strike right now, is that good? Uh, yeah, it's probably the best thing the world can hit. Realistically speaking. I do want more mana. Do I... I guess I'm not finding the ability to save any of these characters just yet. Uh... Gonna give the Guardian their shields. If I do get the ability to heal the Guardian via more mana, that'll be extremely effective. 
Fiend, you can set up the ghost on the bottom line. Well, no, but you have to lock in the mana space in order to try and do that. That would be Fiend hits the ghost on the bottom line and then opens up the ability to kill it with a single target. But if I don't get the mana, I definitely lose the juggler. If I don't get the mana, I definitely lose the guardian as well. I have to push it. I got the mana. So that's enough mana now to cast Ritual. Which I will do. Defend the Guardian for 7 following that. Um... Actually, hang on. I'm going to defend the Guardian for almost 7. Do that as an AoE hit, giving us one damage back. I will strike the ghost and then I will burn, killing the ghost, keeping the Baron on the board, keeping the Shaman and the Guardian each alive. Now, I know the Shaman has the ability to do just like giant individual heals to a I mean, look, I'm not going to turn down four shield right here as well as the growth. But the giant heals would come in clutch at any point, like I was just saying. The world doing six damage with this hit, thank you. Fiend taking exactly as much damage as they are capable of taking. Just riding it right up to the edge of the line. I love it. Oof. Then... Here, I'm just going to use a ritual to get uh, 8 HP back. On the Guardian, the Shaman, and the Fiend gets a disproportionate amount of it because of the Empty Ruby. Mm. I mean, they're not doing direct damage to me this round, so I just need to continue rolling as much as I can to damage them as much as I can. Shaman with a heal as well as mana gain is also a way to damage the enemy. I'll take that. In fact, every burst refunds half of its own cost because of the Baron giving us back one mana every time we do two damage to them. Thimble, immune to damage during your turn. Or Tentacle, adds Repel to the two right sides, negative two max HP. So Repel is end damage while enemies attacking the target. I could Repel... Could I... Could... Hang on, could the Shaman repel for 10 damage using that heal effect? Is that what is currently being said to me? Is that what you're saying? The Abacus and the... Is that... Is that actually what you're saying? There's only one way to find out, right? Abacus. And then repel. 10 damage to all enemies attacking the target. Yeah, that's a good attack. I'm going to add Death Wish to the cantrip side here. Snipers and Ogres. The fact that I have AoE in this deck should make this not too true, uh, not too difficult, but as long as I don't agitate the Ogre too much in the opening here. Oops, that's some agitation. Guardian, that is basically your best side. You just lock that in. Well, you lock in an AoE hit here as well. Gonna push a little. That sucks. Hmm, should I have to lose my Fiend here now? Uh, I need to do three damage in two instances to this Ogre now and then kill it. Suddenly, the game is asking for a lot more than I am capable of providing. Okay. Fiend, do yourself damage. We'll take the burn. There goes the ogre. 
And I can't save the fiend there with a burst. Can I? No. I can almost save the fiend there with a burst. I'm gonna let the fiend die. I think that's probably the best outcome that I was uh, gonna be able to find on that one. Roll your repel side, Shaman. You absolutely need to, please. 100 deaths. 100 hero deaths unlocks a new hero, the Wraith. They have 4 damage self heal on the left side, a self heal, self shield, self heal, self shield application, top and bottom, and 1 damage weaken, as well as dodge all enemy effects and cantrips. Sorry, dodge all enemies' attacks and effects, cantrip. The spell is also leech for one mana, kill an ally, restore five health to all. Neat. Very neat. Um. I think for the effect of continuing to get more AoE in the entire deck, I can take the, uh, the keeper here. There's a little bit of AoE available in the Weaver, by crushing the top and the bottom, but obviously we're losing the Fiend in order to do it, so it kind of can't really be as much as we would have wanted. Uh, any of the rest of this need changing? I think it. Yeah, I think it. Spiker, three snakes, and a thorn. I would take seven damage if I use that protecting the whirl. Ouch. Still probably a good idea though. Hmm. Um please don't die just randomly like that, juggler. I've left two snakes on the field. I can choose between them. I'm gonna take out that one because it looks meaner. I mean, Shaman, if at any point you would like to step up and uh, provide that repel 10, I'd just love to see it. I just, I, you know what? Actually, the kids in the schoolyard have been saying that you don't have a repel 10. And it's just like, like if you had one, you would totally have shown it to me by this point. So like, Right? Like, right, like you would have, right? Right? Um. So here's how we do this. Heal up on that snake. Defend the... There's no character who's taking damage to the snake right now. Because the character is dead. Well, that completely changes uh, what I wanted to do with the entire turn. Thankfully, I can change everything I wanted to do with the entire turn already. Because the Keeper's defense is no longer as valuable. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, this already has self-shield and self-damage. Or, uh, not self-armor, but it does have self-shield. Uh, well, I guess give self-heal and self-shield to this. So I take less damage with that attack. And we can follow up with this. Oh, come on, Shaman. I, I like, I, come on, do the cool thing once before I die. Come on, I tried. I worked so hard. You kidding me? I will settle for the thing that will not instantly lose the game for me here. I have to. Um, let's defend the fiends there. Heal up the fiend a bunch. Take a little bit of damage. I mean, I'm losing the keeper no matter what, right? Yeah. Losing the keeper no matter what this turn, so I will burn in order to get that extra action done.
Heal two, mana gain, repel. You finally gave me the repel side after many, many, many rolls. And it was one of the two repel sides. And it was the one that's not good. Thanks, buddy. I will take it. I don't expect much better. So I will take it. Two, two, and there goes the spiker. We find erythrocyte and spark here. Erythrocyte, replace the middle left side with shield zero flesh. Bonus is equal to your current HP. There's also spell spark. Add mana gain to target sides this turn for five mana. Adding mana gain to heal 10 repel is pretty good. Just double your mana like that. I might not actually be able to use either of these very effectively. I'm going to go for the random tier 6 or 8. We got 8 mirror mask. Replace all sides with the above hero's base sides. Ah. their base sides so the fiend would just get a he like we we don't have mana if we do it like this but we have a huge amount of healing more access to damage more access to uh defense like that honestly this might be a good idea for this fight kind of just Pseudo upgrading the fiend. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna do it. We're up against a single troll as well as four gnolls. Shame, and if you would just love, like, if you would just roll the repel. He would only kill two targets on the field right now. It'd be fair. It's basically fair. Like, it's balanced, actually. It's normal. They're not gonna do it. Uh, I mean, like, I can set up a repel for no damage. Oh, great. The heal 10. We finally rolled it. On the fiend. <laughs> this hurts. We have so many instances of one damage, none of them are doing anything to the gnolls. And any instance we have of higher damage than that is very specific. It's a side that the shaman just refuses to roll, just doesn't even actually have access to. Like, it's, it's a prank. We find again the heal 10 on the fiend. <laughs> it's getting towards the area where it's funny. Uh, God, heal 10 on the Fiend? I mean, that's, yeah, that's a very efficient action for you right now. Why don't you do it? Hmm. Even the Repel 2 right now isn't that good. The Fiend can save themselves as well as heal someone else with that Keeper's effect. There's the Repel! We found the Repel on the Shaman. We had the Repel, we have it, there it is, we've got it, and we have it. I'm going to... deal... 10 health to... Grey, no, to Grey? To... The juggler responding 10 damage against both the knoll and the troll. Great. Then gonna buff up the fiend with self heal and self armor, and then they're going to heal the keeper as well as themselves at the same time. Then I attack the troll, killing them. And the Knoll taking them out too. Now we only have three Knolls left on the field. 
I'm so glad we finally rolled it and literally like if that turn we did not roll it, we were done. That's the end. Like that was, <laughs> there was no coming back from that for us at that point. Uh, so I'm very glad that wasn't how that happened in the end. I'm gonna take the big heal on the fiend again, just in case. This is why we take it. Okay, uh, all that damage to that, and then defend the world, that kills, and everyone's safe. Remarkable work, Shaman. I mean, look, that will do some damage, and I will settle for that one this time. <laughs> Juggler still has no ability to deal damage here. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, pass the armor back and forth between the Whirl and the Keeper there. The Fiend may help keep the Whirl alive. The Shaman may do the same for the Keeper. Well, actually, you should do it for someone who's damaging, like... Ugh, the Knoll. I mean, it does give me the ability to take that Knoll out this round. Good enough. In fact, it's... The final one is exerted for this round. Uh, so none of that can literally actually do any damage. I mean, that'll get me some mana, which I guess is the best that the Shaman can do this round. Again, no damage. <laughs> Three usable dice? What? Use them to do what? Oh boy. Okay, there's an instance of one damage to the Knoll. Now I only need two more of those. Okay, never mind. With the mana, we now have the ability to get over that hump. And it wasn't going to be too much of a problem later. There we go. We get the extra repel. Venom and Barbarian. Venom is a neat way to help us start working down a total consistently. I I like it. What can I say? I just like it. I also don't necessarily know if I can keep a barbarian alive right now. We have like we have a lot of access to healing, admittedly. We have a lot of access to healing actually. And I do need more instances of large individual damage to a target. Because we are going to need to chunk a target and then AoE effect as well. We saw the importance of that in the last fight. Mm. But if I don't have poison, how am I going to start working down boss characters consistently? Am I actually relying on growth and hitting these tens occasionally? Kind of. Taking the Barbarian, I need some damage. Uh, Slate Archer and... Troll King? I mean... Uh, I can shield two damage. Let's get some max HP out from the Shamans, actually. This Bloodlust side is probably the most effective thing that the Barbarian can cast this turn. Juggler, I would really like if you would juggle against uh, either of the other targets, actually. Now, defending the Juggler, uh, or rather defending the Barbarian multiple times over. The Troll King doesn't summon... Yeah, the Troll King doesn't summon Slate, so I actually may work down the Troll King first here. Hmm. Shaman, can you please... Wow, actually no. The answer was a resounding no. Can you please? Mm -mm. I cannot please anyone. I'm not going to roll the side that you need when you need it ever. Or rather, maybe it's the, 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 the maybe they will only roll it when I desperately need it. There's fair proof for that one so far as well. There's six damage we can do to an individual target. 
then I would be able to mana gain and repel. So six damage to the Troll King takes them down to three. Mana gain and repel on the uh, Barbarian, then heals the Barbarian up a little, removes, uh, or rather moves the Archer and the Troll King both to lethal range, and then a burn kills both of them, and then it just leaves the Slate on the field. And then those two shields will keep the final target alive. If the juggler can defend themselves or deal damage to the slate. <sighs> I don't know why I ever expected anything of you. That's my bad. Uh, there goes the final target. Uh, defend the barbarian. Defend the Fiend. I wanted to burst, actually. I don't need to defend the Barbarian. The Barbarian doesn't take any damage this round. If I burn. It's just far more ability to take out the Slate next turn. Which we do. Nice. Thank you, Shaman. Really proven you only do it when it comes in clutch. Takes out the Slate leaving us with Singularity and Brimstone. Brimstone, triple the pips on the rightmost side. Uh... I don't know if any of my people want that. Speaking of things they might not even want, Singularity improved the two right sides. Uh... Or random tier 8? I'm gonna say the Singularity and possibly guide the upgrade of either Fiend or Juggler by which would be best affected. But I'm going to give the uh, the juggler the ability to give the cantrip there. Uh, actually, hang on. Plus, empty max HP as well as incoming healing should definitely be on the Barbarian. That's my bad. Should have done that earlier already. Mm, the rest of this is all still good, I think. We've got a single... Demon... A barrel, multiple fanatics here. This is actually going to be a nightmare. That's four fanatics. They all do so much damage. Oh my god, Shaman, please. Uh, Blue is taking a decent amount of damage. So this Keeper Shield Repel would be very good for them. Barbarian, that is probably your best this turn. Fiend, I'm going to have you save your HP there. Keep it continues to protect Fiend and... Actually, keep it protect thyself. There's more people targeting you. Although we will lose the Keeper still. Uh, six damage here to... I think probably the Barrel. We've already got two targets on only one HP! This is a very swingy run. Too swingy for my tastes, admittedly. Well, that worked. Uh, we can heal the Barbarian as well as kill one of the Fanatics, as well as help kill another one of the Fanatics. Very good. We'll do that. Ooh, good work, Juggler. Defends themselves for six with the Death Wish cantrip. Then has the ability to propagate it to another target. I'm going to attack them on the bottom line and then defend in order to kill both of them. We can have the Fiend get excess. Oh, no, they just get the max HP. They don't get excess out of it. Eh, that's still fine. 
And then the Fnatic attacks the target that they uh, can't do anything against. We're faring surprisingly well in this fight. Yeah, I'm not going to have the Barbarian just choose to die right now. That seems like a bad idea. Speaking of bad ideas, something just happened. Um, barbarian can attack them, and then I can... It's fine. Alright, I'm going to have the Barbarian attack the Demon. The Shaman is going to defend the Fiend, killing two of the targets on the field. Then I'm going to burst, burn, and then heal the Shaman up with current and max HP. We now only have three characters remaining going into one of the later fights in the game, which is, uh, huh? Hmm, it's a little bit of a problem, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Good my fanatic. Welcome back, Juggler and Keeper. Or should I say, Dancer? Or maybe Kronos. Kronos has the ability to give a reuse to a target. Obviously ridiculous with the Shaman if we do it. But also we're going to be losing... Well, actually no. We're not going to be losing out on things. Because we're just not going to be using the Mask anymore. Um, the Dancer though. That's actually really interesting. Because they have one damage to all enemies. Rampage Pain. They can use that to kill an enemy and then have it kill another enemy and kill another enemy. And it's a lot more useful in the circumstance where tough is giving most enemies one final HP. I have anything inventory wise that might be important here. Shift across, add repel to the two right sides. Incoming healing, death wish. Singularity, I've also got to think about the ability to add plus two. I could possibly push the gain one reroll over with the Abacus and then have plus two, gain extra rerolls and gain extra damage. But I don't think that's actually good for me. A lot of on-hit effects from the cantrips are now just going to harm the dancer. I'm going to take Kronos here. And now, do I want to consider not having those sides anymore? That would be giving the juggler Kronos's stat block here. Add Deathwish to the two right sides. Just going to add plus two to them, make them larger pain attacks for the Barbarian. Unfortunately, adding Death Witch to the two right sides is not going to affect anyone else right now. So unless I really wanted to take the Ruby to someone else, which I don't. Yeah. Yes, this is the way that goes right now. Zombies all do AoE attacks. And one of them didn't. Two of them did attack the same target, though, so we could still be in there if the Shaman would like to roll the heal turn. I don't want the first item, I'm just saying. I'm just saying it'd be good. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Juggler on the top line, you do have the ability to dodge here. Uh, we can get a little bit of mana. Kronos, if you could dodge the effects, that would actually probably be better on you. get full mana. I can deal two damage to three targets on the field, giving this the ability to deal six damage, taking an individual target out. God damn it, Shaman. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see if we can live. I would like to. Um, keep it defend myself. Petrify that space, obviously. Barbarian <clears throat> removes the zombie. And then I try and run slow through all the people doing AoE damage. Yep, keeps everyone alive except for the keeper. That's going to be as good as we can get from that turn, unfortunately. 
considering where it started. The growth signs are too small to be able to kill a zombie. I can do the 8 damage pain, which is almost death to the, the basilisk on the bottom side. Sets up for like an AoE or anything like that to be able to take them out. That's some AoE. I'll just settle for it. Kronos dodges. The person taking the most damage to targets that it would be useful to affect here. Uh, yellow. Then I can ritual to get some health back, saving the shaman and the juggler, getting the barbarian back to a reasonable HP position as well. Try not to overstate how important it is, but my god, this is it's it's the side she's rolled the least. I'm certain of it. I'm absolutely certain of it. All right, Let's instantly remove one of the zombies. Only way to go about it at that point. We've got these growing effects on the Kronoses, the Kroni. Ritual keeps us all comfortably alive. And I'm going to hold on to as much mana as possible here. And then just try and roll my growth sides next turn. Yeah, juggler, give someone else the ability to repeat theirs. Growth sign, that's good enough. I'm going to use Ritual to bring that side back just to let the Shaman do it again. See? You can do it. Silk Cape. Copy the leftmost side onto the middle, uh, entire middle row. The ability to repeat constantly for the Kronos. That's actually really funny. And uh, Time Stone. Add Cantrip to the two right sides. Unfortunately, we cannot add that as well as moving the plus 10 into the side as well as giving it repel. Too much. Uh... Cantrip to the... no. Honestly, it only makes sense to take Silk Cape here. Giving someone the ability to repeat... Constantly? Like, Kronos giving the ability for, you know, someone to double dip on their abilities basically every turn is pretty good. I'm gonna take it. There you go. Unfortunately, it will not affect the sides for the juggler. It's only the base signs that the juggler is inheriting with the mirror mask. I gotta remember I have these potions for the next fight. I haven't needed them yet. Uh, could I possibly need revive the two top right defeated allies? Drink? This fight? I think it is theoretically possible that I might need that this fight. I'm gonna take that in one of the Kronos' slots. Okay. Keep has the ability to bestow the armor and self heal effect, which would be gigantic here. Almost kill a banshee individually with just those two. Obviously, I still need two more instances of damage to be able to actually take the target down, but I think that's worthwhile. Uh, yeah, giving the Barbarian the ability to just use that again is completely fine. Never mind. Never mind. Juggler juggles. Get him. Alright, well, Shaman. You should heal the Keeper, who looks like they're having a tough time of it right now. Good work.
I think I should just attack the spiker like that. Wait, hang on. Armor, juggler, spiker. So, I would have to try and heal the juggler who hasn't taken damage. And then overkill like that? Is that really what I have to do in order to get that target down and lose the shaman as well? There's definitely something better here. Absolutely there must be. I could give the, the armor and self-heal to the juggler just to keep them alive. Keep still needs to get that. Um... Then I could also try and heal Kronos, and then focus on just taking out the two Banshees. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Now I don't have to worry about not casting spells for basically the entire fight, lest I want to instantly die. Hmm. Those two sides on the Barbarian seem incredible right now. I would like... Oh my god. Now we can't get anything but it. I'm so pleased. My god am I ever pleased this is finally happening. Um... If I want to stop the Wiz from resummoning, I'm going to need to kill both bones either side of the- I can't kill both bones! Oh no. Uh, eight bang self shield there. Why do you all have to be using exclusive targeting here? There goes the spiker, and the whiz gets to summon more. Hopefully, you all wise up and start targeting the same people again. The only two of them are targeting the same person at any point here. How dare they? Um, hmm. Might have to be realistic here. No, no. Yeah, that needs to push. Uh, I'm going to... Heal the Keeper to reflect that damage out back to the board. Then I will get the Keeper to block for the Shaman. Gonna do the same again for the Keeper. Um, Attack that bone, that should be fine. And then run slow here. Killing all of the bottom line and freeing just these two bones to face me in man-to-man -man combat. Okay, sure. Skeleton and skeleton to juggler, barbarian, keeper, shaman, and Kronos, the lord of time. It sounds a little less balanced when I say it like that. That's why I err on the former side. That does it. Get him, Shaman. Boom! Do it again, Shaman. All right. Ludus and Fencer. God, do I actually care about any of these? I guess I care more about Fencer. I'll, I'll take Fencer. It's got more max HP, and even it can still carry Mirror Mask if I want it to, which maybe I do. The ability to reroll more times by having two people with reroll cantrip on them is so good. Uh, Titan's Bane Potion adds Dispel and Drink and plus one to the middle left side. Hmm. Spell and drink and last one on the middle left side. I mean, the only person who can really use that is the Barbarian. 
Oof. And it's they're the only person who wields something that targets the enemy in that slot right now. Hmm. Not ideal. But I believe required. And yeah, I'm gonna go with a second, a second Chronos. The ability to repeat extra actions when we have big bops like this, as well as the ability to just generate a huge amount of mana. Very, very good. All right, dragon. Let's go. Unfortunately, the dragon doesn't have anything that gets dispelled, so I don't know why I did that. <sighs> I bamboozled myself. Uh, okay, core for the ability to directly target the core, but we're going to lose the Barbarian possibly for having done so. Do I really want to unlock that? What would I prefer, even? No, I think I, I think I roll that. So, that's kind of how I assume it's going. And then we get the extra mana from the fencer two times over. We use the keeper's defense in order to save some HP on the shaman, as well as start moving towards taking the archer out. We use a slow here to finish taking out the archer. 10 excess damage kills the barbarian. I can't keep the keeper alive this round, really. Never mind, I can. Thank heck. I really, really, really needed to as well. Because I wanted to be able to spend the potion to bring the barbarian back this round, rather than waiting. Mana, more mana. The ability to save yourself. More max HP is really good, but I still do want to push the Shaman. Maybe I shouldn't this round. This is good enough. Uh, I probably should have pushed. Uh, should not have pushed the Barbarian past the point they were already capable of doing damage without taking damage. Oops. Okay. Uh, keeps the Keeper alive. The Keeper themselves responds to keep. I mean, I'm going to slow the target three times, preventing a lot of their damage this round. Extremely mana expensive, but also we've been just consistently growing the uh, this one growth side. So it's also working out really well. I mean, look, if the Barbarian is going to go down this round, which it looks like they may do again, I do want them to do a large hit. That's the largest hit they have access to, and in fact, they will survive it. Big hit. I can give you the ability to do it again. And then a single burst, and another will take out the dragon. I, I knew there was a better way to format the start of that turn if I needed to go back, but I also looked like I had the resources to just push through the rest of it. That was a hard-fought victory. I am very proud of myself in this run. There were some very interesting and quirky things going on. Basically, the Shaman waited until the last possible... It almost seemed like it was testing me. Like, I don't know if you're ready for this jelly. I don't know if your body goes bootalicious, babe. I don't know if you deserve a heal 10 and repel. And then we proved that we deserved it. And then it rewarded us many, many multiple times over. I could not be happy with this run. For the moment!
moment, rather. My name is Nratini. The name of the game is Bean Slice and Dice. Up at the top left of the series playlist, we're all in the content of the game path, present, and future. Down below is YouTube's recommendation for what it thinks you should watch next and streaming past the names of the people so generously supporting the Republic on patreon.com slash Rapsy Plays. Add above the thanks in. A special thanks this episode to Silly. Hopefully, you'll have been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully, we'll see you all next time.